We want to bring these persons who are basically a blank slate of individuals who we know existed because the numbers are there through the federal census, but we don't know what their identity was. So because of that, we began this project. Chris Haley is the director for the study of the legacy of slavery in Maryland at the Maryland State Archives. He says research supported by grants and focused on the Underground Railroad began in 2001. The legacy of slavery began in 2005. The Maryland Slavery Project has more than 400,000 bits of information to help you in your research. Such as uh, what their ages were, what their complexions were, what their occupations were, which is to say what they were asked to do or made to do, where they lived, with whom they lived, how long they lived, if they tried to escape. Here you can find out who was free. Here uh, named Margaret Matthew, aged about 29 years, about five feet five and a half inches high, was freeborn. You can find out who the slave owners were. Sophia Green, female, healthy. This is, these are the slaves of Ann Nichols. Haley says not every person of African descent in Maryland was enslaved. Benjamin Banneker, for instance, who was born in Maryland, was never enslaved because his grandmother achieved her freedom. So what he was, he would have achieved something called a certificate of freedom to prove the fact, affirm the fact, that he was a free individual. So in doing research, don't assume your ancestor was enslaved throughout their life. Go through birth, death, and marriage records. Then when you get to what we call the, the blind spot or the, the block, which is 1870, that's when you start looking into records which are probably about property holding. The resources are plentiful, and looking into your family history is all about discovery. And if we care about who our ancestors were, then I think it helps us care about who we are today. Lisa Robinson, WBAL, TV 11 News.